Today we're turning back the hands of time, 25 years actually, to look at one of the most iconic physiques in cinema history and we're talking about Brad Pitt in Fight Club. Now this physique for sure inspired a generation of young men to finally want to get in shape. That being said, what is it that makes it iconic and does it even stand the test of time today? What were the workouts like? What was the diet like that produced this physique? Let's dive in. So now how was it that a man that stood just 5 foot 11 inches tall at 155 pounds was able to create such a lasting impression that we're still talking about him and this physique 25 years later? Because as you look here at Brad Pitt from this iconic scene, you'll see that he's not incredibly muscular. Certainly not, again, how I remember our action heroes from the 80s, like Stallone, Schwarzenegger, and Van Damme. It wasn't that level of muscularity, but it still made a giant impact. And I think it was mostly because of the air of accessibility. People thought they could actually look like this if they focused a little bit on their diet and maybe trained at least a little bit. As a matter of fact, I might argue that this gentleman right here in the background had bigger muscles than Brad Pitt ever would, but they never went on to make any Fight Club 2s starring him. The reason for that is because it wasn't just all about the physique, he also played the alpha male character, exuding a lot of confidence, which is also something very appealing to a young man who maybe wanted to be more than they were today in many different ways. Which by the way I think is only worse these days because of social media, but we'll get to that. But if you look at the physique, again, he had good delt development. Matter of fact, I'd say very good delt development for the size he was at 155 pounds. His chest was actually very developed as well. His abs, he kind of had that shrink-wrapped appearance that a lot of us desire. And his arms were actually proportional to the rest of his physique. So again, if you look at the other pictures here, you can underscore what I was just saying. Like the chest is not small. Even if you look at that upper chest line, he's got upper shelf development. His traps were actually good. His delts, once again, good. His arms, like yeah, he looks a little bit thin in this photo here. But again, if you want to focus on what looks good, look at the cap delts. Look at the traps once again. Even the chest over here, that sort of chest line that disappears on people who don't have any chest development. So I wouldn't argue that he looked skinny, but a lot of people say that. And the reason for that is they're too jaded by what they're looking at today or for the last 10 or 15 years because what that looks like is something like this. Scroll down any wall on Instagram and these are the types of physiques that you're looking at today. Whether they be enhanced, most of them, or natural, very few of them, the idea is what are you comparing? Because Brad Pitt's physique was 100% natural. That one could argue could be obtained by having mostly the right diet, then the right training approach, which we'll talk about, and also maybe even just the right genetics because even if you look at Brad Pitt five years ago at the age of 55, you can still see he has some of that same development there. Genetically, he was given some gifts, not to mention the looks that guy gave him too. That lucky son of a bitch. Some guys just get it all. But that said, you can't completely get around hard work and that's where we have to dive into what the workouts look like because there was some work being done. Now before we jump into the workout, I have to start with a disclaimer here. We all know that the Hollywood workouts are not always what they appear to be. Matter of fact, sometimes the trainer will invite a magazine in to shoot for one day that's supposed to give a representation of what was done over the course of a year. It's just not going to be that accurate. But in the case of Brad Pitt's workouts for this movie, there's this one version that sort of circulates that seems to be the generally adopted version of what was done. And the fact that nobody has stood up to challenge this in the last 25 years leads me to think that maybe at least it has a resemblance to what actually was done. And it started, of course, with an international chest day on Monday. If you look at the rest of the split, you had a back day on Tuesday, shoulders on Wednesday, biceps and triceps on Thursday, and then some cardio on Friday and Saturday. Sunday was rest, which means no leg day. Guys, don't skip leg day. Now we know that if you're really trying to maximize muscularity, you want to see maybe a little bit more frequency there. Maybe each muscle group twice a week. And that's not what was done. But if you look at the workouts themselves, some of the programming here wasn't really that conducive to creating a mass monster. Not to say that it was all bad, I'm just saying that it wasn't really designed to do that. Now we look at a chest day, we've got a push-up as a warm-up here, which is good. I like that. It's a good way to do your push-up. If you wanted to build more muscle with the push-up beyond the warm-up, if you put it in the workout itself, you'd be doing a variation of a push-up that was much more challenging, right? That would take you to failure at a cap of 25 reps, maybe even lower. Or you do them in the back end of a drop set of a dumbbell bench press, right? To take a set to and through failure. But you're not seeing any of that in these workouts. Which then leads to the barbell bench press as sort of his staple exercise. And I think this is again where sometimes when they start to include specific weights, you might want to question the authenticity of it. Again, not that it matters what weights he's lifting here, but when they say he's doing 25 reps at 165 pounds and 15 at 195 and 8 reps at 225 at just a body weight of 155 pounds, you either start saying like, 
holy shit, you know, Brad Pitt's pretty strong for his size, or maybe these weights aren't that accurate. Again, it's not really the thing that should be focused on though. What we really wanna talk about is what the structure is. And he's doing basically an ascending pyramid. As he's increasing the weight, he's decreasing the repetitions. And it's a good way for you to build some good solid foundation of mass. But the volume is limited. He's only doing three sets of that. And when you move on to the workout, you start to see that he's got three machine exercises up next, which again, can be very good for hypertrophy. That's not the point of pointing out that they're done on machines, but it's really the repetition style where he's doing 15 reps of 80, 100, and 130 pounds. An incline press, 15 reps of 80, 100, and 130 pounds. Pec deck, 15 reps of 60, 70, 80 pounds. What does that mean? What that means is that if he can do 15 reps of 130 on this Nautilus press, what do you think those sets are gonna do when he's using 100 pounds and 80 pounds? Pretty much nothing. In other words, there's a lot of junk volume here, a lot of non-productive volume. I will say that the volume itself, as it accrues in total, can still have some hypertrophic benefits, right? You can still get some increased tonality, increased muscularity, resting muscle tone. All those things can be improved by just going through the act of training, but when you're not really equating the volume with the intensity or having enough intensity to even elicit a response, you're gonna have limited hypertrophy. And I think that's a theme that will run through all these workouts. You're gonna kind of get that look where he looks good, but you know there's just not a whole hell of a lot of muscle there. And if you look at that, it actually pervades the rest of the workouts. Because again, if you look again, seated rows, 15 reps at 75, 80, and 85 pounds, which by the way, once again, like, I don't think these are accurate weights because 85 pounds on a seated row is quite light. And I don't think that that's where he was capping off. I think that these are inaccurate. But let's say that he did 15 reps as a max on his 85 pound set. What does that mean once again for his 80 pound set and his 75 pound set? He's well into the 20s and above in terms of the number of repetitions he can perform. And if he's not taking them all the way till failure, right, he's just setting it at 15 repetitions, so he's not taking them to failure, then we know it's not likely gonna elicit any or a significant growth response from what we know. Accruing volume for the sake of volume might help him to create some more of that hardened look, but certainly not in terms of overall mass and size. Shoulder day is a little bit interesting though because he changes things up a little bit here. Now he's doing Arnold presses, laterals, and front raises. By the way, he's doing front raises because he's trying to build his front delts, which it works. But he's doing heavier weights, I would say. Again, if we believe in any of the authenticity of the weights themselves, we look at 55 pounds on an Arnold press is pretty decent. 30 pound lateral raises is pretty significant. The front raises is 25 pounds. I think if you look at his physique and you see which part of it was most developed, I'd say it was his delts. We pointed that out when we looked at the physique review. Is it due to the fact that he's actually performing three sets of the heavier weights? So he's increasing that tension component, the overall tension component that creates hypertrophy on its own, right? it's its own driver. This might be why he has a little bit better development here. I'm just speculating. I, if this was me, would have included a little bit of that light metabolic work here too, taken to that extreme failure, because I think the combination of heavy and light when it comes to delt work is the best way to make them grow. And then when we get to arm training, we see that same style working its way through here. The 15 reps at 60, 80, and 95 pounds. Once again, 95 pounds on a preacher curl is pretty damn heavy. But if the point is that it's a 95 pound, 15 rep max set, what does it say about the 60 pound set? Again, he could use all the intensifying techniques. He could slow the tempo down. He could squeeze every repetition. He could do all those things that perhaps enhance the muscularity, right? The, the appearance of the muscle, especially combined with the low body fat, but not necessarily the increased size that we'd be wanting to get from a different way to approach these workouts. And we look at Friday and Saturday cardio days, you see he's doing it 80 to 90% max heart rate for an hour. So there's gonna be some significant caloric burn and any significant caloric burn is gonna make it a little bit more difficult to assist in his recovery or at least to the additional muscle growth because he's tapping into those resources, right? So again, on a whole, is it effective for creating the look that he had there? I think very much so. But again, when we compare it to what people are aspiring to be now, it's probably why it doesn't look as impressive because people want more muscle these days and this isn't necessarily gonna cut it. And so if his training wasn't mostly responsible for that iconic physique, then what was? Guys, in almost every single instance, when we're talking about being impressed by somebody's level of leanness, it's what they put in their mouth. It's the food that they eat, or in some cases, not eat. And I'll tell you guys, I've spoken about this many times myself, I don't do a whole hell of a lot of cardio or conditioning, 
but I'm able to maintain my low levels of body fat year round, year after year after year because I have my nutrition locked in. And it actually looks a little bit similar to what Brad Pitt ate here, but with less restrictions, believe it or not. And we start with a breakfast that was reported to have looked something like this. Six egg whites, seven egg yolks, 75 grams of oatmeal, and 14 grams of raisins. And once again, I think you have to kind of question a little bit the content of what's put out there because it gets very oddly specific with six egg whites and seven egg yolks. Jesse, doesn't that just mean six full eggs and maybe one extra yolk? Yes. Okay, maybe it's just seven eggs, right? I don't know, just, just thinking out loud. But meanwhile, do I like what's put here? Yeah, I do, because this is very similar to what I eat every single morning. I have oatmeal, I have egg whites, I have a glass of milk, maybe a protein shake, but this is similar to what I have. And there's nothing wrong with this. This is what I would call clean eating. And no, I'm not anti-carb, so I have no problems with this. But you will see that there's protein pretty much showing up in every meal. And that next meal comes as a morning snack, only maybe an hour and a half or two hours later. And this is another thing that I advocate a lot. Not just eating the three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but having a meal in between, most importantly, to get a little extra protein in throughout the day, and also, to just control your cravings so that you're not reaching for those less clean meal options because of your hunger levels. This actually does that. And it's not a whole hell of a lot of food. You can see it has just 290 calories consisting of canned tuna and whole wheat pita bread. Again, I'm not gonna say that this is the most delicious for me, but the spirit of what he's doing here is right. And again, he's continuing to sort of eat clean. 883 calories at this point. Then we go into his lunch. In this case, two chicken breasts. So again, more protein and prioritizing protein along with 100 grams of brown rice or pasta, and then some grilled vegetables as well. So you guys have heard me talk about all the time the need to sort of structure your meal around the protein, build around the protein. You can see he did that here with brown rice or pasta. So again, not fearing those complex carbs, but then also having a healthy portion, one cup of these fibrous carbohydrates, which helped again with satiety and make you feel more full, but doing it in a more calorie friendly way. Now we're up to a daily total of 1,629 after his 746 calorie lunch. In the afternoon, oh my God. Jesse, he was using Pro 30G protein? All the, way, so. all the way back then? I'm impressed. All of a sudden, I love this meal plan. This is amazing. Now he's having just a basic whey protein shake, but if he was doing it today, I know he'd choose Pro 30G, which you could over at athenex.com. Mixing it with a banana, 235 calories here. Again, he's mixing it in water, I'm assuming. 1,864 calories for the day. That was pre-workout. Goes and does his workout, comes back. Again, we know the post-workout window is not necessarily a thing anymore, but back then it was certainly a thing that we believed in. That timing is not necessarily that important, but having more protein is a good idea. Another whey protein shake, Pro 30G once again, and bananas, 2,099 calories on the day. But he's not quite done yet because he's got dinner. And for dinner, we're once again basing a meal around a protein, in this case, grilled chicken or fish. Once again, some type of complex carbohydrate like pasta or brown rice, a cup of grilled vegetables, and also a salad. So does this qualify as clean eating? Yes. 746 calories here is an indication that you're eating clean because again, the caloric density is going to be lower, but the volumes of food can be higher. And if you're eating this way, you're gonna feel fuller for longer and you're not gonna wind up succumbing to those cheat options which will derail your plan, especially when the goal is to look as lean as he did in the movie. Now, where does that put him? 2,845 daily calories. If you run this through any of those calorie estimators, you'll see that this is right about in the range to keep him right around maintenance level. But when you throw those cardio sessions in that he does at that high intensity level and his activity level overall in filming the movie, you're gonna start to get into a little bit of a caloric deficit. But the overall concept here, guys, is that this type of eating is what you should expect and should expect to do yourself if you wanna get to lean levels of body fat, especially at the reported levels of 6% that he actually played in this movie. But if you're like me and you prefer even a more reasonable approach to nutrition with more meal options and maybe even less restrictive eating, you can find that because I actually created one. It's the Athlon X Factor meal plan that I include in all my programs. Maybe 25 years from now, people will be still talking about your level of leanness and physique and overall development. You can do that, guys, by following my step-by-step -step programs and obviously the same supplements that uh, Brad Pitt did 25 years ago, even before they were invented, Pro 30G. If you found the video helpful, guys, leave your comments and thumbs up below. Who else would you like me to cover in future videos? And I'll do just that. All right, guys, make sure you click subscribe, turn on notifications so you never miss a video when we put one out. All right, guys, see you soon.